Welcome back to PSC's Tech Byte. This is episode two of a series of episodes about PMPJS. PMPJS is an open source library which is provided by the PMP community in order to help developers to easily create client-side solutions based on TypeScript, JavaScript, and generally speaking, the client-side development model. Today, I want to show you how you can leverage PMPJS to easily read the lists and items in lists. And I will also show you how to use the Yeoman generator built by PMP for SharePoint framework in order to speed up the uh, setup process of a new SharePoint framework solution. So let's move to the demo environment and let's have fun. So this is the main entry point for PMPJS, so pmp.github.io slash pmpjs. And just as a reminder, this is the entry point for the SPFX Yeoman generator built by PMP. What I'm going to do is to create a new SharePoint framework solution using that Yeoman generator. So I will say yo at pmp slash spfx. And I will have a really nice UI provided by the uh, PMP SPFX Yeoman generator, where I can select that I'm targeting SharePoint Online. I want to use, for example, React.js for building the UI of my uh, web parts. I want to use PMPJS so I can easily include uh, in the scaffolding of my solution uh, PMPJS uh, as a predefined uh, included package. I can do the same for all the other PMP packages if I like. I can choose which, is, uh, which will be the version of TypeScript that I will use. 3.3 is uh, okay for me right now. I can eventually add uh, some tooling like the Web App Bundle Analyzer or the Style Linter and so on and so forth. So really useful. And if I want, I can even have an out of the box predefined pipeline for Azure DevOps, which I will not do right now, but maybe in the future in an uh, upcoming uh, video in the PSC Stack Byte series. Last but not least, I can eventually enable uh, automated testing using Jest uh, in my solution. So really, really useful, uh, uh, the uh, PMP Yeoman generator for SharePoint framework. Once I'm done, I will simply provide the name of the solution. I will use the current folder. I don't want to have a tenant-wide available solution, and I don't want to have a domain isolated package. I will create a web part, which I will call, for example, working with the lists. And it will be just a sample web part to work with lists in PMP.js. And that's it. So it will do the scaffolding of my solution. And as soon as it will be ready, we will be able to play with it. It's a matter usually of a few seconds, but I will zoom out and zoom in into the session just to save some of your time. And the scaffolding is now complete. So I can run code dot to uh, see what has been generated by the uh, Yeoman generator for SharePoint framework built by uh, PMP. Here is the solution. And as you can see, I have a very simple and basic solution, but in the packages in the file, for example, I already have uh, the dependency on PMP.js because I decided to include it out of the box in my solution. Now I will focus on the web part section and to the working with list web part. First of all, I will update uh, the properties of my web part in order to accept uh, a list title as an input argument for my list. And then I will configure the React component that I have under the cover of my solution to accept uh, in its collection of properties the context of a SharePoint framework because I will use it uh, to configure the uh, PMPJS object. So I will accept the uh, context as well as uh, the list title that I get uh, from the web part. Moreover, in the web part, I will configure the context that I just created and defined in the properties object, in the properties interface, uh, which will be this dot context of my uh, SharePoint framework uh, client side web part. Uh, and I will also provide the list uh, title input argument, which will be these properties dot list title. And as such, I have configured my uh, client-side web part. Now I have to uh, properly define the list title property in the UI of my property pane for the web part, just for the sake of completeness. And I will have, for example, to define a list title field label instead of the description field label. So let me open the localization section. I will use this uh, field, which will be list uh, title. 
and I will define it also in the interface right here so that I am fully configured to support uh, the new property in the UI of my web part. So now let's move to the actual content uh, and let's say that I want to create also a state uh, interface uh, which will define the state uh, of my React component. Inside this state, uh, I will simply declare that I have an interface, I working with list state, uh, which will be made by a collection and array of strings, which will be the title of the items in a list. Uh, and I will have a Boolean to define if I'm loading uh, or if I'm done with the loading of the uh, web part uh, uh, UI in the React component. So I can now open the React component and finalize the implementation of that one. First of all, I will have to import the namespace uh, for SP, the object provided in PMPJS, and I will have uh, to configure my state interface in order to have access to the state uh, of my component, which will have to be defined right here. Moreover, I will have to define a constructor for my component, which will accept as an input argument the properties of type I working with list properties, which I'll provide to the super uh, base type uh, constructor. And I will also set the state of my component in order to be made of a loading variable, which will be by default true. And, sorry, and it will have uh, an empty collection of items so far. So null in this uh, definition, initial definition of my uh, React component in the constructor. Once I've done that, I will have to declare that in the component mount of my React component, I will set up the PMPGS context with this props.context, and I will have to define a load current list item method, which I will use to load all of the items in the target list that I want to read the items from. The load current list items will be an asynchronous method uh, bound to this uh, type, which will be defined pretty uh, soon. And I will also have to take care of updating uh, the uh, rendering of my React component whenever there will be a component in update event. So when the properties of my uh, component will be updated, for example, because I update the list title that I want to load. So once I've done that, uh, I can simply render inside the content uh, of my uh, React component, uh, the uh, items, the title of the items that I want to extract uh, from uh, my target list. So instead of the default content, I will simply use uh, uh, this state loading. If it is not loading, I will render in an ordered list with the items. Otherwise, I will simply write loading. So now the real meat is inside the load current list items method. What can I do there? First of all, I will have uh, to uh, be sure that I'm in the loading state, so I will update the state of the component. Then I will simply be able to say that I want to define a new variable, which can be called list items, which can be an array of any so far, and it will be the result of reading the sp.web.lists. So I'm accessing the collection of lists in my target web, get by title so that I will be able to get a target list by title. The title will be this props dot list title, so the uh, input uh, parameter provided by the user. And I will get access to the items with the Fluent API of PMPJS. And I will get that list of items. By doing that, I will be able to play with my list of items. We can also see, which we can also see in the console just for the sake of completeness. So I can save, write them in the console just for the sake of showing you what's inside that collection. Well, when I'm done, I can simply set the state of my component in order to have a loading state equal false and to have the items as a collection of the title of all of the items. And by default, I will get the titles as an included uh, uh, metadata property of every single item that I will extract from my uh, target list. So I'm done with that. Let me start a terminal window and let me play with uh, this new uh, React component inside the web part that I just defined. So let me do a gulp serve dash dash no browser in order to being able to use this uh, web part, this client side web part uh, in the workbench uh, of a target site. Once I'm done with that, I can move 
to the workbench, to the SharePoint uh, framework workbench, in a site in which I have a custom list with a bunch of items. And here I can refresh this page, the workbench page. I can add my working with lists web part. And if I go into the properties, I can say that I want to access custom list. When I'm done with the title, as you can see, I easily uh, see the list of titles of the items that I have in my list. And if I press F12, you can also see in the console, aside from some exceptions, that I have the list of items. And for every single item that I extracted, I have these properties available. And for example, I have the title, I have the ID, and all the other useful properties that I can eventually show in my UI or use in the logic of my client side web part. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.